Good morning. Today we look at uh, chapters 50, 51, and 52 in the book of Isaiah. And uh, this, this first part of chapter 50, uh, you know, God reminds the people of Israel that, that they are his. Um, you know, it starts, he, he, the Lord says, where is your mother's bill of divorce of which I put her away? Or which of my creditors have I sold you to? And, and he, he goes on, you know, it's no, because your sins you were sold. It isn't, you know, God hasn't divorced them. God hasn't forgotten them. God hasn't, you know, cast them away, but rather they've been punished. And, um, and a lot of times, I mean, I've heard that, you know, in the, as, as God called the Israelites to be his people, you know, they were learning how to be his people. Well, it took them a long time, many years. And, well, have we still, and still have we yet learned to be God's people, really? I mean, we, we, we still don't follow God the way we should, as a, as a whole. I mean, not, I'm not talking about sometimes us as individuals, but as a whole. You know, people just don't follow what God would have them do. So, um, so God was, you know, the Israelites, when they wouldn't listen, wouldn't follow God, and their leaders led them astray, you know, they were punished. It wasn't that God was giving them this bad stuff, but God was allowing punishment to happen. I don't know. But, you know, and then God asks in verse 2, Why was no one there when I came? Why did no one answer when I called? You know, why didn't you hear me? Why didn't you listen? You were, where were you? I mean, it's just like, you know, as parents or sometimes as spouses maybe, you know, we, we are called for, for dinner. We're called for whatever, you know, well, you know, and, and we don't hear, we don't respond. And, you know, and it's, we're so occupied with other things. And that's what, you know, the Israelites, you know, got to be, they were preoccupied with other things. You know, part of it is life gets in the way, but, you know, they were, they were witnessing all of these other things going on in these other nations and, and especially when they had a, a big idol that they would worship or whatever, you know, and, you know, they just, you know, and, and this God they were worshiping was just this something out there somewhere, you know, and they couldn't see God. And, but they could see these idols. And this was part of the being led astray so easily because of what you can see, what you desire, and all of those things. He said, I... You know, I clothe the heavens with sack blackness and make sack sackcloth their their covering. You know, so I mean, he, he's saying, you know, I call my people and they just don't hear. And then starting in verse four, it, this is the the third servant song of Isaiah, and there are four servant songs, and we'll get to the fourth one in the book of in the chapter fifty two. And some of the servant songs are attributed that they're maybe referring to the prophet Isaiah, but mostly they're, you know, the, the nation of Israel is, is God's servant. You know, the Lord has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. I mean, morning by way of morning, he wakes him. And these verses to me are very, are familiar. We hear them um, different times in different places, but, you know, and he's given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary world. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen to those, to those who are taught. The Lord has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. Huh. I was not rebellious. Huh. I mean, I, mean uh, I guess when, if we, when we hear the God and we rightly do our best to follow the God, maybe we can say we're not rebellious. But, but for the most part, uh, you know, we, we don't really turn our backs on God, and, and we don't, I don't think we just act out of, uh, out of an attitude of we just don't care. But sometimes it's, you know, the, the ways of the world, the pressures of the world, and so much else that goes on that, that we, we can't really listen and, and hear what God would have us do. We can't live as God would have us live, and that's, that's hard. Um, verse 6 says, I gave my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. 
So this could be about Isaiah, could be about Israel, or it could be some of it a prophecy about Jesus, you know, who turns, you know, he gives his back, turns his cheek, you know, and, and you know, he's just, there's so many different ways to, to read this. And, um, and it's just like, uh, well, the Ethiopian eunuch was reading from Isaiah when Philip came to him. And those verses are there. That's upcoming yet that we'll get to those. And, and, um, you know, it's just interesting how often these words of the Old Testament prophets come up in so much of life. Um, in chapter 50, we hear, listen to me, uh, two or three different times, three times, I think. You know, verse 1, verse 4, and verse 7 all begin with, listen to me, and it's you who pursue righteousness. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nations. And then in verse 7, listen to me, you who know righteousness. So God is calling to us. I mean, not just to the Israelites, but he's, he's calling to each and every one. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from whom you were hewn. I mean, God created humanity in his own image. And, and um, we have that, you know, foundation of, of God creating us in his image. And, and you know, this, you know, it's the, the rock from whom, from whom you were hewn. I looked to see if rock was capitalized. It's not. But, you know, we, we, we sing on Christ the solid rock I stand. You know, and, um, but, but God is, is solid. God is not changing. He's not moving. He's, he's not going away. And so when we, when we build our lives and we live our lives, um, based on our faith and our trust in God, and we don't, we don't allow other things to get in the way of that faith. And that's a struggle sometimes. But, you know, so God, God comes. And then in verse two, he's, reminding them that that we came from God. You know, look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah who bore you, for he was but one when I called him, and I blessed him and made him many. And then the Lord will comfort Zion, Jerusalem, Israel. The Lord will comfort all her waste places and will make her wilderness like Eden. You know, so the, the wastelands will be like Eden, the Garden of Eden, where everything was green and lush and and in harmony with God. I mean, this is one of the things I always think about with the Garden of Eden is, you know, previous to the temptation was that it was all in harmony with God, it all as God had intended it to be. And so, you know, to be like Eden means that we are at harmony with God. We are righteous, you know, and, and we are made righteous. So we are in harmony with God, even though, you know, we're kind of sinners a little bit, a lot. And then verse 4 again, I refer to, listen to my people, give heed to me, my nations, for a teaching will go out and justice will come. Listen to me, you who are righteous, verse 7. Your people have my teaching in your hearts. We know what's right. We know what's wrong. We know what God would have us do. And, and yet, it's so hard sometimes. Uh, verse 9 again, a call. Wake up, awake, put on strength of the Lord. You know, awake as in days of old, was it not you? You know, and so again, this is uh, praising God and reminding us of who God is. And then verse 13, you have forgotten the Lord your maker. And yeah, I don't know if I should, I mean, do we forget God in our day? I mean, you and me, uh, maybe not, but... I mean, as as I look at the world and so much of what's going on, it, it seems like God is somewhat forgotten again. You know, and, and then it's, you know, reminding us of all that God has done. And then verse 15, for I am the Lord your God who stirs the sea. The Lord of hosts is his name. And then the end of verse 16, you are my people. You know, and so God reminding the Israelite nation of who he is and of who they are, whose they are as well. And in chapter 52, um, you know, wake up Jerusalem, put on your strength uh, for the for the uncircumcised and, and the unclean will no longer enter you. 
<coughs> excuse me, the foreigners, foreign lands will no longer come and conquer you and reign over you. You will be my people again, and I will deliver you. And and that's what you know, verses 3 through 6 are, you know, that you are my people, I will take care of you, and I will protect you. And then verse 7, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of the messenger. Who And it's, you know, a little reminder in here of, of God's greatness, of God's glory. And then verses 13 through 15 are the fourth song of Isaiah, fourth servant song, uh, talking again, more about, you know, see my servant shall prosper about Israel. He will be exalted and lifted up. And uh, it, it's just, you know, so God is reminding us again, always, always reminding us of his faithfulness and of his power and of his glory and that we are his. That's the most important thing that we can remember.